Welcome to the WHHI TV Daily News. It's another beautiful day in the Low Country. I'm Betsy McDaniel, and here are today's headlines. The defense in the Alec Murdoch murder case could still get the case by the end of the week, but not until the latest star witness for the prosecution is finished testifying. He is the lead agent from the State Inf Law Enforcement Division, David Owen, who will likely face serious cross-examination for his handling of the murder site. The prosecution called Maggie Murdoch's sister, Marion Proctor, to the stand, where she talked about how detached from the investigation her brother-in-law was before he was finally arrested. She told the jury he never talked about finding the person responsible for the shootings and that his top priority was clearing Paul's name in the boat crash investigation that started the whole saga. And she testified that at one point Alec told her that Maggie did not suffer when she was shot at close range. The Beaufort Jasper Water Sewer Authority says the water in the farm neighborhood in Bluffton is safe to drink after fixing a water main break that caused 45,000 gallons of wastewater to be released over the weekend. The rain we got all day Saturday helped dilute some of the wastewater that flowed into ponds in adjacent neighborhoods. There could still be detours in the area while the area around the break is repaired. The presidential race in 2024 has gotten a bit more interesting, at least for us in South Carolina, with the formal announcement by former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley that she's running for president. After Wednesday morning's opening speech in Charleston, she's off to Iowa and New Hampshire. While she doesn't have any big endorsers yet, she's gotten out ahead of Senator Tim Scott as the first major Republican candidate to challenge former President Trump. Haley served as Trump's UN ambassador during the early years of his presidency. Her message early on is one of generational change in the party saying she doesn't think you need to be 80 years old to be a leader in D.C. Haley is 51. Having a large majority in the State House, Republicans have the freedom to introduce bills for consideration. And the House is currently considering a bill that would remove all training requirements to legally carry a handgun in the state. 25 other states, including our neighbors in Georgia, already have approved what legislators call constitutional carry. Law enforcement authorities oppose the idea, and the minority in the legislature doesn't think everyone who's 18 or older and can legally buy a gun should just be allowed to carry one without any instruction. The new bill does prohibit constitutional carry where weapons are still banned. Courthouses, jails, schools, daycare centers, hospitals, and restaurants where signs prohibit them. An almost identical bill did not make it to the Senate in 2021. A lot of you are probably already thinking about getting your taxes done, maybe even a little early if you've got a refund coming. The Low Country's Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program and the American Association of Retired Persons are offering free tax return preparation for those of you over 60, earning less than $60,000 a year, or those with limited English speaking skills. The help is available at the Beaufort, Bluffton, St. Helena, and Lobico libraries between now and tax day. You can also walk into the Hilton Head Library for help, but only on Tuesdays. More information can be found at lowcountryvolunteerconnections.org. And yet another one of our delicacies is endangered in the low country and statewide, blue crabs. The volume of them reached a 50-year low in 2021, the last year the State Department of Natural Resources has data on them. Poor state management is blamed for some of the overfishing in the past couple of decades, but the DNR also says our estuaries are getting warmer and saltier, which is bad for the blue crabs. They're also spawning earlier in the year. As recently as 1998, commercial fishermen caught 6.3 million pounds of blue crabs. In 2021, the number was only 2.6 million pounds. The DNR is recommending a cut in the number of licenses, the number of crab pots per license, and catch limits. The media sources on your screen will have more on these and other stories, and we would love for you to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram at WHHITV. And if you have an idea for a news story, we'd love to hear it, so drop us a line at news at WHHITV.com. And now here's Justin Jarrett with what happened last night in the Loco. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by locosports.com. The February frenzy of the high school basketball playoffs begins tonight across the Loco, but we had one more night of regular season games on tap Tuesday, including a Loco on Loco clash out in Ridgeland. Thomas Hayward playing host to Buford Academy as longtime Rebels coach Nick Shuford tries to play spoiler to his future school, and freshman phenom Tonio Banner kept THA in it in the first half before Zeke Gonzalez heated up from three-point range to give the Eagles an 11-point cushion at halftime. And BA's defense pounced after the break. Eagles all up in the passing lanes in the second half, creating runouts at the other end, and they run away with a 76-47 win to wrap up a top seed and first round bye in the Skiza 2A state tournament. BA's girls also rolled to a big win to finish off a perfect region slate. 
while Hilton Head Christian Academy's girls picked up an impressive road win at First Baptist. Hilton Head Prep's boys stayed hot going into the postseason with a 51-40 win at Pinewood Prep, but HHCA's boys dropped their second straight game on the road against a strong First Baptist team. The Dolphins and Eagles both earned number two seeds and could meet again for the Skiza 3A state championship. Head over to Loco Sports Twitter feed to get the full Skiza brackets and we'll have a breakdown up on locosports.com later on. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. Thanks, Justin. Now let's hand it over to Maria Soden for a look at our weather. Thanks, Betsy. Yep, so taking a look ahead, it does look like we see some more of this beautiful weather throughout the rest of the week and into the weekend. Taking a look at Thursday, it's going to be partly cloudy and warm, with Hillnet having a high of 71, a low of 57. Bluffton's going to have a high of 74, a low of 57, and Beaufort's going to have a high of 75 and a low of 57. The summers for Thursdays going to be at 7.04 and sunsets going to be at 6.10. Taking a look at the beach tides, low tide's going to be at 12.52 p.m. and high tide's going to be at 5.37 p.m. Taking a look into the rest of the week and into the weekend, Friday we'll see a passing shower in the morning but should clear up by the early afternoon and then it'll just be cloudy the rest of the day with highs in the 70s and lows in the 40s. Come Saturday it's going to be cooler but sunny with highs in the 50s and lows in the 40s and then come Sunday it's going to be partly cloudy with highs going back up into the 60s and lows in the 40s. That's it for today, let's hit it back to the desk. Thanks Maria and we'll be back in just a moment so stay with us.